you want to deal with the universe and how it was created, well, you start off with the phenomena. What do we notice? Well, there are great big forces, forces which are beyond human capacity to control. We try, but we can't. After all, uh, we're supposed to experience a uh, semi-annual shift in climate here in Southern California. It's supposed to rain in the winter, it's supposed to be dry all summer, and that is a normal situation for Southern California as it is for the eastern seaboard of the Mediterranean, that's why they call it Mediterranean climate, uh, where it rains from uh, beginning of November to the end of March and then it's dry from uh, April through October. And you adjust your life to that, and you adjust agriculture to it, and everything works. But then, we've lived through 17 months, and we just had rain for a couple of days now, for the first time in 17 months. So that's a dislocation or an imbalance in what we consider to be the natural order. So let's take it for granted that we can't control the climate, we can't control the um, the temperature. There are earth shakers, there are storms, there are hurricanes, there are cyclones, there are tsunamis, there are rock falls. When was it last week? A part of a mountain fell down and crushed a woman. These things are phenomena of nature. We can examine them, we can look at them, and we can say, what, is it, what does this have to do? Well, the philosophers and the thinkers of antiquity, and I'm speaking about the people who first wrote, writing was invented by the Sumerians around 3500 BC. So, from the beginning of the writing, 3500 to 3200, in that period, writing was invented for the first time, and they, they shifted rather rapidly from drawing pictures to making phonetic symbols of the actual speech. And that's how writing fi finally became real writing, namely symbols were created which represented phonetics, which represented speech. Um, we now live, what, uh, the year is 2000. So from 3000 BC to now, it's 5000 years. For three-fifths of that period, 60% of that period. Uh, nobody used an alphabet. Well, there was a small area where people used an alphabet, but the dominant writing system was either cuneiform, complex symbols, or hieroglyphic in Egypt, complex symbols. Now, the earliest writing, the earliest that we can read, which represents human thought and ideas, is no more than 5,000 years old. And what's, in, what's amazing is that the earliest writing that we can read and understand already represents concepts and ideas and philosophies which are modern. There are certain things which simply are seen and observed and understood, and they are understood in the 20th century no better than they were 3000 BC. Speech was as fully developed, well, speech was fully developed by 30,000 BC. I mean fully developed, so that they could express religious and philosophical ideas, but they didn't leave a record because they didn't invent writing. But when we read what the Sumerians wrote and the Babylonians wrote 3,000 BC, they had a fully developed speech capable of expressing any idea that they had. They didn't have any vocabulary for computers, but they did a lot of computing. They didn't have vocabulary for uh, heavier than air aircraft, but they had a vocabulary adequate for their needs and it was a very extensive vocabulary. This was not limited. Their speech was not limited. The fact is that every language spoken on earth is fully developed and perfectly adequate of expressing the ideas that are known to the people who speak these languages. Well, obviously, Eskimos will be more subtle about their description of snow and ice than we. And we will not be as 
sophisticated, let's say, about describing uh, the ailments of the horse or the camel, a veterinarian will be. But you see, he has a special vocabulary. Each speech group expresses itself as fully as it can to the extent that it needs to. So when you talk about speech, it's been around for a long time. That's the human quality. I mean, this is what we say. What is distinctive about the human being? Speech and thought, uh, at least the thought which can be expressed in speech. Now, when we read Sumerian or Babylonian, these are the earliest, Sumerian and Babylonian writings, they write their accounts of how the universe was created. So we have ancient cosmologies. We also see that what the Babylonians thought about creation, philosophically and uh, theoretically, was similar to what the Greeks thought about creation. There's no difference between them in terms of their basic ideas. Therefore, we can say Babylonian cosmology, Assyrian, Sumerian, Phoenician, Greek, Roman, they all had basically similar cosmologies. They made sense, they're logical, and we can accept them to a certain extent. What was their cosmology? They said essentially the universe is the totality of the great forces that operate in it. That is, the universe is the totality of all the forces that operate. But let's take the great forces, because they are the ones that are most impressive and that affect us most dramatically and forcefully. Well, we have the ocean. And you can look at the ocean in many different ways. And uh, if you sail across the Atlantic in June, it looks like an expanded Prospect Park Lake. I mean, you know, that's what it is in June. You look at the Atlantic at another time of year, and there are angry waves. And then there are times when a swirling wind begins to move and press down on the waters and raises them. And then you see the ocean raging. That's different. Now, the ocean raging is very impressive. That is a phenomenon which we have to take into consideration. We see rain and wind and snow and thunder and lightning. And this thing that came down, which they may call the Montreal Express in Boston and the uh, Manitoba Charger uh, in the Midwest, or the um, Northeaster, and a tremendous wind comes in bearing snow and cold and ice and freezing. It's a phenomenon which we have to be aware of. So what is the nature of the creation of the universe? They came up with the idea that the universe was created by the conflict of elemental forces, which eventually reached equilibrium. That is to say, each force in and of itself, let loose, can destroy, destroy everything. But if there is an opposition force, they may reach a point where they have to strike an armistice. And when they strike equilibrium, then existence can come in, can begin. 